Disney Odd Pod. I'm Kat. I'm Dee. And this week, it's a mystery filled with so many questions. Who killed Scott Bakula? What does Bruce Willis's schlong look like? And most importantly, where the hell can you get a nail gun that is that strong and powerful and precise? Is it Home Depot or Lowe's? We don't know. Those are the questions that are answered today. Ace is where you get it. The helpful hardware folks. Just kidding. The Color of Night from 1994. Intimate things in the heat of passion. Why would you be ashamed of being a shrink? I told you I was a shrink. Dr. Bill Kappa is about to learn things he never knew. You're trying to play it safe, trying to see me as a case instead of as a female. About human desires. <laughs> One of my patients was killed last night. He was stabbed in the chest 38 times. Now he's probing their deepest secrets. You know what kind of power people hand over to streets? Well, maybe sometimes they hand over more than they want. But somebody's secret will make him the next target. Tell me about this Monday group. There's five patients in the group. Like five cuckoos? No. Four neurotics of varying degrees and one killer. He's being drawn deeper. I don't really know who you are. You do. You have all the power. Into a world he can't explain. You've fallen into a trap. A hunger he can't resist. Oh, God, I'm not who you think I am. And a danger <laughs> he can't escape. No! Whoever it was was a maniac. You think it could have been a woman? You know what I think? I think it was you. I don't know about you, but my life is better from having watched this movie. (laughs) I highly disagree. I'm going to be, I'm just going to, I'm going to throw it out there because I have to. This movie is retarded. Oh, it's really bad. And I mean, I don't, I don't, you know, whatever, I'm using that word, but I mean it. It's it's horrible. We got 25 minutes in and I was like, oh, this half, I think maybe only 15 more minutes and I was like, oh no, this is completely... No, it's stupid. When I say that my life is better, it's just this movie is not supposed to be humorous, but I was Is it not? I no, mean, I, I know, know it's not. I know it's not because it's 1994 and they were taking themselves super oh my fucking God. serial. I'm serial. I'm super serial. I mean, we're talking the year Maybe the best movie year of all time. And this, and this comes out. Is it, it part it's, of it? It's just incredible. And it has Bryce Willis. He did Pulp Fiction the same year. You know, he probably didn't put this on his <laughs> resume. For- oh, no. No, 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 no. I was right. I knew about this movie somewhat. I knew oh, that this was the, the I'm Bruce sure Willis you did. dickhead movie. I'm sure you did know about this movie. Because this that was like what this movie was all famous for. It was like, oh my god, you see Bruce Willis' okay. cock head. Is it actually his dick, though? Yeah, it's Is that the whole thing? Oh my god, ridiculous. And just, this is a perfect example of the disproportional amount of nudity in movies. Most movies, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It just should go both ways. But nobody really wants to see anybody's little floppy dick. I'm talking about some butts, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some I man did. butts, maybe? There wasn't a whole lot of Bruce Willis butt, was Mm-mm. there? No, it was really weird. None. They they, None. Sh- they shot basically all around his ass. Yeah, but no butt, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I don't know. I, I think he has, like, that weird, saggy man ass. We'll never know. We'll know what the tip of his yeah. dick looks like. We're yeah. not going to know what his man ass looks like. Um, let me read the Amazon synopsis, um, and then we're going to do things a little bit differently going forward on the show, I think, and this is a good, this is a good foray into trying that. We'll probably just keep trying different things until something sticks, but whatever. So, color of night, drama, romance, mysterious, sensual. Bruce Willis is a psychologist who takes over a therapy group that may be hiding his best friend's murderer. While embarking on a sizzling sexual affair with a young woman who's concealing shocking secrets of her own. I gotta say, the tagline, the five suspects, two lovers, one killer, nothing is what it seems, except murder. There was more than two lovers. 
There was like there seven. Was, there was so this was if you drew this out on a diagram, there would be so many cross sections. Like everybody was getting down with everybody in it's this just movie. Wiener cousin. I'm honestly shocked that Bruce Willis didn't get down with that Sandra trick. I was fully expecting that to happen. I I, I knew it was not going to. I was fully expecting it. So it just, <laughs> the director Richard Rush. Dick Rush. I mean, I was. I feel like his name. I guess he just has a name that sounds like it's more. I think you're thinking of Jeffrey Rush. I, I know, but it just. I mean, he did a couple of movies. In the I 80s guess, and 70s, yeah. but The Stuntman is his most notable one. Never even heard of it, but there's that. The Stuntman. And this had multiple writers. Yep. Billy Ray, not to be confused with Billy Ray Cyrus, and Matthew Chapman. And Billy Ray's greatest work is probably Volcano with Tommy Lee Jones. <laughs> Wow. Or uh, the Hunger Games is pretty is actually decent, even though he, he, the best he had could be, be as a screenwriter. He didn't write the book. That's what I mean. It's like yeah. are you really writing that? Not really. You're just yeah, writing he's the just script. a writer on the script to make it like adapt or whatever. Yeah. And then of course our our the lovely acting of Bryce Willis in this movie. Yeah. What what is your favorite Bruce Willis? Die Hard, I guess. Well, in Pulp Fiction. I think Fifth Element is my favorite Bruce Willis. I like Fifth, Fifth Element Bruce only Willis. Okay, and well, I like Twelve Monkeys a lot. Oh, Twelve Monkeys is good. That is yeah. a good one. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one too. Look, have any of you heard of the Army of the Twelve Monkeys? They they paint this. They stencil this on the sides of buildings everywhere. Have you seen this, Mr. Cole? Have, have you seen this? Why don't you just take your time? and try to explain this whole thing from the beginning. Right, right, it's 1990. Okay, that makes sense. They wouldn't have been active yet. Okay. Um. Yeah, Pulp Fiction Bruce Willis is pretty good. Die Hard Bruce Willis classic, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But this is, um, this is Bruce Willis trying to be serious, kind of. Well, he's, all, he's frequently serious. Well, he's frequently I just serious. I don't but... understand who, like, what? About what? <laughs> I, I don't understand this movie. <laughs> it's very... It, it's, um... But let's let's plow yeah. through this. Let's, uh, Jane March, who's Rose... You were in The Lover, of course, with uh, directed by Jean-Jacques Hano. Mm -hmm. And, of course, this Color of Night is directed by Richard Rush. Mm -hmm. And in both movies, there was a great deal of nudity that you had to do. Now, did the two directors approach the nudity scenes in different ways or similar or what? Um... Well, the nudity was there, and it had to be done, and it was something I'd sworn never to do again after The Lover. But for this movie, there's the, the point of The Lover, you can't go much beyond that without getting an X rating, and this is Hollywood, and they want R rating. So for me, it was really not as difficult as, as I could have made it difficult for myself. Richard and Jean-Jacques both were very good with actors and very charismatic and very behind their actors and Richard had taken a great chance on me for me to do this part. It should have gone to an American actress and he, he really believed in me and uh, it was very much part of the script. Bruce and I have a relationship so there's going to be a love story and love scenes. Um, but they didn't, I went in very serious and Bruce will vouch for this but and he just turned me around completely and said, come on, it's just a love scene. It's really not that important. We're all friends now. We've, we've had three months to get to know each other. Whatever. You come to my house, you hang out in Idaho with my wife and my kids. You, you know, it, it doesn't matter. And in the end, it was just, okay, let's do it. And uh, he was very relaxed. He, he, was, he was so helpful. It could have been a nightmare, but it wasn't. It was actually technical, ugly, messy, but uh, ultimately fun. <laughs> And Richie, I guess. Um, and uh, Bonnie. And Bonnie. Uh, never, not really much else that she's done. No, this is her like most famous thing. And yeah, not really, and just had an extremely short career. The police officer Martinez, Ruben Blades, even though it's probably pronounced Bla Bladez, probably. I doubt it. Hey, 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 hey! Anderson! This is civilization, man! What do you think, this is your bedroom? Damn! Knock, knock. But he he is like the stereotypical. We need a Hispanic guy in a ton of things. His most famous thing is Once Upon a Time in Mexico. But he has a ton of 
credits. credits, but they're for not well-known stuff. But he always plays like he's just the guy, the uh, Hispanic guy, guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's a fucking psycho in this movie. And Scott Bakula, Scott Bakula, Mr. Quantum Leap is in this for a short period of time. Very short. I thought based on how it was laid out, he was going to be more in the movie. But so he plays himself all the time. It's just because he's what famous. Do you mean? Like all of his acting credits are like Scott Bakula plays himself. Like, fa- Family Guy, he's Scott Bakula. This, he's Scott Bakula. Well, because the only thing he's known for is Quantum But that's what I, that's, right, so that's a thing, right? Like, here's yeah. Scott Bakula. Well, yeah. he's in this for about five seconds. And then I included uh, the Sandra lady, Leslie Ann Warren, because she was the only somewhat notable person. Well, the, the, the black cop who was barely in it, he was the guy from Coming to America. Okay, because I didn't scroll he down that far. the guy Jerry Curl. Well, no, I recognized him. So oh, I was okay. Like, is that the guy? Yeah, that's the that's guy. That's the guy. You got any fun for you? So this movie was a box office failure, but did very well on home video. It was the number, or it was one of the top 20 most rented films in 1985. I wonder why. Could it be it's a bunch of men and boys? There's a lot of titties in this movie. I'm going to rent it. And chicks looking for Bruce Willis's talk tip. Like, really? Like, yeah, (laughs) that is, that was a big thing in movies back then was nudity. Because there was no internet. And so it just makes sense. I was like, okay, yeah, yeah. that you makes sense. Titties. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. This movie uh, was a big with the Razzies. So it was nominated for worst for actor, actress, and screen couple. And it won for worst picture of 1995. Oh, you don't say it yeah. won for worst picture, or 1995 or well, yeah, 1994? But, you know, well, 1995 Razzies, that's when they have it. Yeah. Well, that would make sense since it was such a great year for film in 94 mm-hmm. that... Yeah, sounds about right. Richard Rush said he was incredibly proud of this film because it was such a difficult concept. He's proud of it because it's his, like, this is my sex fantasy. Difficult concept? What? Yeah, it was his sex film, as he said. So this is literally him saying, this is my all my sexual fantasies playing out on screen. I want the chick to dress up as a boy for a lot of it. Yeah, it's... I'm just saying, there's so much of this movie that is clearly... Wouldn't this be cool if this happened? Oh my god, what if this happened? Like, wouldn't this be so surprising if this happened? Yeah. So, with that, let's get into some of the things that happened. So, this is basically, I just want to talk about a few scenes. Well, there's a lot to discuss here. First of all, the idea that his, he goes to see his friend because he's feeling some kind of way about his psychiatrist. Well, he went colorblind because he saw some lady well, kill herself. Just, just couldn't see red. Just couldn't see red. Oh, my. Okay. Just couldn't see red. <laughs> Only red. Only red. Which is full of holes in and of itself. But, because... Looks like blood. But the, the, then he just assumes this guy's life. Scott Bakula, because Scott Bakula gets murdered. And okay, I need to talk about the Scott Bakula. Well, hang on, hang on. Hang on. It, let's, just, let's just get through this. Okay. And he basically just takes over this guy's life. He lives in his house. He's driving his cars. Seeing his patients. Seeing his patients. And nobody says anything. Where is his ex-wife? Where is his estate? And he's, it, he's, solved, he's trying to solve the murder along is, the way. Is this possible? Can you just, like, Maybe be the, like, hey, my friend got murdered. I am now going to assume his life. In the, ni- in the 90s? Maybe. What a utopia. Maybe. You can just be like, hey, I'm friends with this rich guy. Murder him so I can take over his house. <laughs> I mean, that could have been the alternate twist. Was <laughs> it? What the fuck? <laughs> it's just like, it's just so casual. It, and he, the one scene he's like... Oh, I forgot he was dead. Did you? You you took over his whole life. How did you forget he was did dead? You? How did you forget he was did dead? <laughs> but so the Scott Bakula death scene is one of my favorite scenes yeah, in the whole movie. Yeah, that's pretty funny. It is so dramatic, and he it is just like he gets stabbed and slashed, and then he falls on like a, through a window that's obviously fake, right? And the glass goes straight through him. And he's like, ugh. <laughs> Ah! 
And it's just incredible. It's one of my favorite scenes in the movie. It, well, yeah, with, like, the knife that comes out of the wrist. Oh, it was so fake. It's yeah. one of those, like, fake prop knives that just is, like, retracts. Bouncy. And yeah. it's, it was really horrible. But he probably was like, this is my short role. I'm going to make the most of it with this ridiculous death scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My God. And then there's the big twist of the movie is everybody's fucking the same lady. Yeah, and they don't real. They're all in this group therapy. But I'm sorry, it was so obvious right away. Of course, it was obvious. That that's what was going on. I was like, wait, that's all there is to this? Is that it's just going to be that everybody's fucking this broad? Yeah, of course it was, it was obvious. Ob- it was basically obvious that she was the Richie guy too. Because you're like, I was like, no, that's a bitch that's playing that. Like, yeah. What? Wh- what? No, that's a woman. Yeah, it was. That's the big twist, and so Bruce Willis is having a very scandalous affair with this woman, doesn't see that it's this, the Richie person he's looking at, like, oh, she had glasses on, and she had, like, concealer over her lips, I don't know. Something, but yeah, yeah. Is, um... And, like, a butchy haircut. Yeah, and so Scott Bakula Wait. was convinced someone was trying to kill him, and they're still trying, like, this is what didn't make sense. But he was also fucking that, that Right, person. so was yeah. Rose trying to kill Bruce Willis? Because she put a rattlesnake... In his mailbox. Was that her? <laughs> or was it the brother? I assume all of this was the brother. Because it, we never even got paid off to who was driving the red car. Right. Was it the brother or was it Rose? You'll never know. And you don't know, is it, was Rose actually, did she actually kill Scott Bakula? Or did the brother kill Scott Bakula? I think the brother had to have done it because it was like big powerful man moves. Well, and then the guy, the other guy who got killed. Um, because even, it was, it was, it was like telegraphed because... When Bruce Willis met that guy, he's like, oh, you're very strong. You're you work very with your hands. hands. And it's like, okay, yeah, he's the guy that can overpower your super in shape buddy. Correct, sir. So. I mean, I think that was the only reason they even had that stupid fucking bike scene was to be like, oh, this guy's in shape. Oh, you mean the Bacula Willis bike scene at the beginning? Yeah, yeah. So their whole thing gives me this vibe that, like, they used to in college, like, pick up a chick and, like, banger together that was kind of the vibe that I was, was getting a little bit of that vibe from that, 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 that it, which checks out I mean. it was just another amazing scene is when so he meets this girl and then she like makes her take him to dinner and the scene where she's waiting for the cab and all of a sudden they're just gonna start making out and he's like taking her clothes off yeah in front of the valet stand. In the public, yeah. In public. And she's like, you got a boner. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Just, so, what? Did, did this happen in the 90s? Was this a thing? I don't, I don't know. I don't think so, though. But it, it is this just like this guy's fantasy? It's gotta be. Because this is like the middle of the AIDS times, too. Like, where were the condoms? Oh, there was no condoms. Yeah. You don't need condoms, and apparently when you're having sex in a pool, you don't need to breathe Yeah, at that all. was amazing. It, what was like, a- she was going to suck his dick underwater. What was amazing was all the camera shots in this movie, was when they first started kissing at the house in the pool, they're over this barrier, and all of a sudden it just flashes, and they're standing in front of the pool, and they fall into the pool yeah, together, yeah. and they're just so overcome with desire. Here she comes, weightless, hanging from the sky. And see, that was the, the a lot of that weird camera work like that. I was like, is this supposed to be supernatural or no? It's just really bad camera work. I think it was they were trying to make it dramatic, but it didn't work. It just and the music that was going oh along with it God. was so perfect and amazing, uh, yeah, and just it was. fantastic. Um, oh, and then another one of my favorite scenes is the pushing of the car off the parking garage. Oh, yeah. Trying to kill Bruce Willis. And why did he yell, like, when it all hit? Like, he was uh, hurt? No! Oh, no! Oh, okay. Because he, he thought it was the chick. And maybe that's what you're supposed to get from it, is that, like, Bruce Willis thought it was the chick, but then he figured out it was the brother? I, I guess. I just... 
What? <laughs> it, this movie was very confusing. Like there was, It wasn't confusing, it was just stupid. He was trying to make it like, oh, this is a sexy mystery. Bruce Willis has to solve and figure out who the bad guy is. And I feel like group therapy was like a really big thing in the 90s, too. Like, oh, look, it's, it's so edgy. Everybody's in group therapy. And- well, okay, so the Sandra chick was sleeping with the, the ADHD guy, or the... Um, OCD, OCD guy. At one point. In time. At one point. But then they were both sleeping with somebody named Bonnie. Oh, oh, shut up! God. Shut up! Shut up! You promiscuous cunt! And if you must know, I do have somebody in my life. Black, emotional, whole, unattractive me! <laughs> I want sex all the time. <laughs> You're smiling. Huh. Is that a smile? Look at your hair. You think you're God's gift to women? Let me tell you something. You are nothing. Nothing but a shallow, rigid, self-protective, anal coward! Four of them were sleeping with With somebody named Bonnie. So it's like, you guys didn't think that maybe this is the same person? Maybe? Yeah. Even a little bit? Yeah, no. It... it... Impossibly. I mean, did you have any other, uh... Scenes that you particularly enjoyed or wanted to dissect? Um, you know, the snake scene. The snake scene is great. Why was he paralyzed in the middle okay, of the road? right? He's literally the snake's in the mailbox. He falls down and then he's like, oh, help, help, I can't move. It's like this, what do you, what do what? you think's going to happen? Yeah, it's like the snake is going to chase him or bite him if he moves. The snake's like five feet away from him up in the air in a mailbox. Like, he's more likely to get you as you're laying on the ground. Yeah, like, just stand up, fool. And he gets a shovel and hits the mailbox, and then he's like, ha! And that's the end of the snake. And he just lets the snake roll away, yeah. It's just... What? (laughs) Oh, and all of the super professional police work by the Martinez guy. Like... Okay, (laughs) his entire role makes no fucking sense whatsoever. It's because he has to show up at the end of the movie... And be like, aren't you glad I'm here right before I die in a very dramatic... He didn't die. Remember? Because he was yelling for them to help him. Oh, that's right. He I... just got stuck to the wall with the nail with gun. With the nail gun. <laughs> Fucking nail gun. Okay. The magic the... nail gun. It, it, these are like the most powerful nails I've ever seen. Yeah. Literally, he shoots one nail, like Bruce Willis's shoulder and your, his shirt, and you're just stuck to the wall. You can't move. Can't move. What? This makes no sense. Yeah. But yeah, the end scene was uh, pretty great. Yeah, something like And they that. climb up to the, I don't know, water, not a water tower. I have a, no idea what that was supposed to be. In She's going to commit suicide. and Because she killed her brother. Because she killed her brother. And Bruce Willis is like, no, Rose, don't. But he falls, and she falls at the same time, and he's able to catch her. Yeah. And and then all they're just going to live happily ever after, apparently. Yeah, he's like, I don't care that you were fucking banging the entire group therapy. You love me, and I love you. And it's fine. It's it's all fine. Yeah, it's just wildly stupid. I mean, yeah. But do you do you have any awards to give out for this movie? I do not much though because it really didn't deserve it. I got the uh, "Hey, I ran into the back of you, let's fuck" award for just like what? I feel like this, this is a very tropey thing in movies where oh, we get in an accident, and that's how we met. We're gonna bang now. Like yeah, they didn't even really talk to each other. It was just like banging. Mrs. Fenderbender, they kept calling her. Yeah. Um, I have a Cloris Leachman Award for literally everybody in this movie. Every single person in this movie. I I don't think there was a single scene where sex was not referenced in this movie. Yeah, probably not. Or explicitly. I mean, the one se- the scene in the pool, they're, they just, that's all they did all night, apparently, was have sex. Yeah, yeah, including, oh no, that was the next time in the bathtub. <laughs> where they were playing with the tank. <laughs> it's it- like a- Maybe that's where Armageddon got the idea for the animal cookies. Yeah, I don't know. My <laughs> uh, other well, award... No, because Bruce Willis was in Armageddon. Yeah, he was I like, know. hey, this cool thing happened in this movie. I did Color of Night. With, I mean, you should do this with animal can cookies. My, can I show my cockhead in this one, too? Yeah. 
and or he tried to get Ben Affleck to show his cock head, and then Ben Affleck <laughs> was like, "No, I'm not going to do that. You fucking weirdo." Oh, <laughs> man. Uh, so my other award is the the Captain Save a Ho Award for Bruce Willis, obviously because he's just he had to he just fell he in love with a ho. fell in love with a crazy. She has a split. She has split personality yeah, disorder. Yeah, like. Yeah. He's a psychologist. So, which really actually makes their relationship completely inappropriate because he has, like, all the power and... Oh, and let's not forget... Because he's going to be taking over for her brother and her life of, like, controlling her life. He sees red at the end of the movie with the light. Yeah, yeah. He saved her, so he sees red. So that means it's okay. Yeah, it's all right. They fixed each other. Everything's okay Sex now. fixes everything. I have a surprise, surprise. So many unsurprising surprises in this movie. <laughs> Like, I have never been more unsurprised in my entire life at every That's single turn of this movie. That's a damn fact. I'm just like, uh, uh, like I even said to you, I wish we could have watched this at one and a half speed. Mm-hmm. It would have really helped. Yep. Uh, the only other thing I gave was the sin- subsonic drums because... I had that too. It had that in that car chase scene. The Every single scene had a very tropey, like the love scenes all had like saxophony yeah, music yeah. and every single scene, it was like, it was like watching an episode of Law and Order where it's like, okay, this is where the killer is going to confess because they play the key notes of a certain sound. And they did that in this movie. It was like, okay, now they're going to, they're going to have sex now because they're playing this music. Sexual intercourse. Yeah. All right. Do you got any surprises or disappointments? Surprise, surprise. Just the length, I guess, because it's two hours and there's two hours. Not the girth. And they <laughs> <laughs> And they they really could have cut that like really the beginning really could have been cut down. They could have cut the whole thing down. It like they really so could have cut it down. Annoyingly long and slow and repetitive. So repetitive. It was uh Ugh. Yeah, which apparently I didn't. Uh, delayed fun fact. Apparently, what's her face? Um, what's her name? Jane March had a problem with the amount of nudity. It's like, what did you. You what? signed up for this. She was naked basically the entire movie. Didn't she read the fucking script? Well, yeah, and apparently it was an issue on set because she started being weird about it. And the director was like, basically, like, you fucking signed up to do this. Like, you either do this or you're fired. Well, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Just, so she was also crazy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Um, uh, remake or sequel, I, why? What about a prequel with Scott Bakula and Bruce Willis going on the town, psychologists <laughs> the boys, on the town? The schoolboys, like uh, some kind of university movie? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Where they accidentally kill a hooker or something? Exactly. That's yeah. why they're still best friends. They can't talk about it. You got anything else? Um... No, just that this movie is, uh, it, wow. Yeah. It was something, that's for sure. Underwhelming. Underwhelming. And it looks like it lost money. Yeah, the budget was $40 million, and they didn't even clear 20 They made $19.7 million. <sighs> So it was a flop. But it killed on home video rental, yo. <laughs> Gotta see that dick and titties. Yeah, yeah, Oh yeah. my god. So what do you think the Rotten Tomato score for this movie is? It can't be very good. No, it can't. You're right. Uh, so with the critics, it's 22. The people, it's 30. Okay. It checks out. What's your score? Um, I'm kind of right in there. I mean, this movie is not a good movie. This is like a, a really bad movie. But I found it very comical in a lot of places. I was entertained. I wanted to see what was going to happen. Were you not entertained? I was very entertained. I gave it a 25% or 2.5 out of 10 split personalities with giant oversized nipples. Because I'm telling you, she had ridiculously oversized areolas. She did have some big areolas. I gave it a 22. Somewhere in the same. But, yeah, for two boobies. (laughs) Um... And that's the only reason they got that high of a score is because there was so much nudity. Otherwise, it would have gotten like a five. So much nudity. Yeah. It'll, it's the only thing that saved it. Well, that's it. That's it. And now it's time for Cat's favorite part of the podcast. 
787, so it's something Ooh. fairly new. Whoa! Is it? Yeah, maybe not fairly. Oh, shit, it's one we already seen. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. Okay, of all the Pirates movies, we get the one we've already seen. Oh, that's a long movie. Yeah, no shit. How about number 246? It's gonna be an old one. Probably not a Disney. Not too old. Probably a Disney movie. No, that's right in the middle of the 90s, I think. That's where most of these movies no, are going to be. This no. is going to turn into the 90s movie podcast. Yeah, that's good enough, but it's nothing I've ever heard of. Okay, so number 246 from 1991, we actually might have to look this up. Okay. Is Hear My Song, which is a Miramax movie. So is it a real movie? Hear My Song? Hear My Song. From 1991? Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, it did. Okay, well, there you go. Hear My Song. So. Ten hours long. I hope it's not ten hours long. <laughs> but uh, what do you think it's about? Exactly what I just said. What? Hear my song. Ten hours long. Oh my god. Okay. Maybe it's hear my schlong. <laughs> ten miles long. <laughs> ten miles long. Oh yeah. boy. All right. So in the meantime, like, subscribe, do your things. Let us know how you liked the modifications we made, that would be cool. Or if you like the color of night, you didn't. Just kidding. No, nobody likes this movie. Well, I don't know. On IMDb, it gets like four out of five. So clearly some people IMDb like this movie. IMDb doesn't count for anything. Their rating system is all out of whack. Somebody liked it. Just yeah, saying. I don't think so. Um, but in the meantime, this has been Disney on Pod. I'm Kat. I'm Dee. Bye! You could have bought a new one a hundred times. Well, maybe I will. Maybe this will be my sign. Here's your sign. Remember when that was all the rage? Yes, yeah, exactly what I'm making fun of right now. I'm, all the rage. I'm built a ball. I have one thing. Here's your sign. I write it along there with get her done. And you might be a redneck. You might be. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Ron White was the only one that was funny. He's the uh, only one that had fucking comedic material and jokes. Jokes for days. The other ones just had things. If your TV has a TV, you might be a redneck. <laughs> what does that even mean, if your TV has a TV? I don't know, I just... Like, that doesn't even make sense. Yeah. If you know what your sister's pussy smells like, you might be a redneck. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> forgot the name of the movie that we just watched. Did you get your stuff pulled up? Uh, sure. Enough that I'll get there. <laughs> if your daddy was your first love, you might be a redneck. Director's cut? What? Oh yeah, there's a whole story behind that. <laughs> um, what am I looking? Oh yeah, the next miserable fucking disaster we have to pull up here. Let's see. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Whoosh, dramatic whoosh. <laughs> so now that you got your operatics warmed up, <laughs> are you ready? Red leather, yellow leather, red, red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow red, leather. Red, yellow, wait. Red leather, yellow leather, red, yellow, red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather, red. <laughs> So that's hard. She sold she sells down by the shoe See, that shore. one's not that hard. It's, I know, but the, the red leather, yellow leather's a good Yeah, one. that's that's horrible. Like, yeah. that's horrific, whoever yeah. invented that. Sure is. Sure is. <clears throat> sure is. If you took your cousin to the prom and you did more than make out with him, you might be a redneck. But you're not a redneck if you make out with him. That's just normal to make out with your cousin. <laughs> Okay, this is, let's, uh...
You ready? Let's see. Yeah, why not? If your grandma's also your great aunt, you might be a redneck. <laughs> you just got all these for days. Oh, yeah, I could come up with all kinds of I'm things. sure it's you easy. could. It's the easiest fucking joke in the yeah, world. Are you kidding is. me? It is. It's like one of the most simplistic bits of all time. Are you, it's like, wait, what? You made millions of dollars doing this? Is So what is more simplistic, that or the, huh? Oh. The, the well, Tim Allen grunt or whatever. The Tim Allen grunt thing, though, that was just part of a TV show. So that was, I, I get that. That's, that's simple. But really, even more simplistic is Get Her Done. I mean. Get Her Done. There's never been anything more simplistic. Oh, poor. And stupid. What was his character's name in Cars? <sighs> Mater. Mater. Poor Mater. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Larry the Cable Guy or Steve, whatever. But, okay, his what's name worse, is. Larry the Cable Guy or Jeff Dunham with his puppets? If you if you had to pick to go to one of those comedy shows, it, like you had to pick one. Somebody was paying you, and you had to pick one. You know, I'd have to go. I'd have to go Dunham. I'm sorry, I would. I just can't do it. I can't either, but I can't do either one of them. The problem with going to Larry the Cable Guy is that the that singular fake. Uh, accent is going to get really annoying after a while. At least with Jeff Dunham, there's, there's multiple, multiple characters. Horrible accents and yeah, characters. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like at least there's going to be some variety. Uh, uh, fine. Yeah. Terrible, terrible comedy. Not a comedy at all, but at least a hair better than Larry the Cable Guy, I yeah. gotta say. Well, let's uh, get into this comedy, shall yeah, we? Yeah. So you want to. Do the thing. Uh-huh.